So is that a good volume for me to talk at? All right. Um, so I want to talk about the question of whether or not uh, human beings have libertarian free will, or as I will call it, L freedom. Um, and we can define this in the following way, and this is on the handout. Everything I say is, most of what I say is on the handout. I'm not going to keep referring to it. Um, so a person has libertarian freedom just in case um, some of her decisions are such that they're both undetermined and non-random in a certain important way, and I'll tell you what that means in a second. And second, the indeterminacy uh, has to generate the non-randomness or procure it or something like that. Um, okay, so to say that a decision is not determined or undetermined is to say that it's not causally necessitated by prior events together with causal laws. Um, so libertarian freedom is incompatible with determinism, where determinism is the thesis that every event is causally necessitated by the past and the laws. Right? So the idea behind determinism is once you have the Big Bang and the laws, that sort of predicts the whole future. Um, OK, and, and the, the relevant kind of non-randomness, in order for a choice to be libertarian free, it's not enough that it's undetermined. It also has to be non-random in a certain way. And there's a lot to say about what exactly this involves. But the basic idea is just that the person has to be centrally involved in the decision. Um, and I will use the terms authorship and control to um, capture this idea. So the idea is um, it's got to be me who makes the choice and who controls which option is chosen. Um, OK, you might think there are other things that are needed for the relevant kind of non-randomness, like certain kinds of rationality. Um, but those requirements are less important, and I'm going to just sort of skip over them in the interest of time. OK, so the idea, again, is um, a choice is, or a person is libertarian-free just in case some of her decisions are both undetermined and non-random in this way, and the indeterminacy is what gets you the, the relevant kind of non-randomness. All right, and I'm going to use the, the term libertarianism to denote the view that um, human beings do have this kind of free will. And that's a little bit non-standard in philosophy. Um, uh, usually the term libertarianism denotes the view that we have this kind of free will and that this kind of freedom, libertarian freedom, is real free will. Um, but I'm not going to be interested here in the question of whether or not free will really is libertarian freedom. Um, and so I'm going to just be using libertarianism to denote the view that we've got this kind of freedom. Um, so you, you might think that I should be interested in the question of whether or not free will is libertarian freedom. But uh, first of all, I think that's pr it's the question of what free will really is is a terminological question and actually not that important. Um, but more to the point, it seems to me that um, the question of whether we have libertarian freedom is independently interesting, um, regardless of whether it turns out to really be free will, in other words, to be the reference of the ordinary term free will, and regardless of whether it's required for some kind of moral responsibility. Um, so I'm just interested in the question about humans and human decision-making processes whether um, they have this kind of freedom in it. Um, OK. And so what I'm going to be doing is defending libertarianism against um, mostly a certain philosophical objection. I, originally, I was going to talk sort of half and half about philosophy and some scientific arguments. But then I realized I had less time than I thought. And I also realized that people here probably don't know the philosophy as well. And so I thought I'd slow down with the philosophy. So I'm mostly going to talk about that. But at the end, I'll, I'm going to save a little bit of time to sort of quickly talk about some of the scientific stuff. Um, and my view is that it's an open question whether libertarianism is true. It's an open empirical question. So I'm going to be blocking arguments against it. But that doesn't mean I think there's positive arguments for it. OK. Um, so. There's, a, um, there's an old philosophical argument against libertarianism that goes back centuries that goes like this. Look, an undetermined event is an event that's not caused. It's an event that sort of just happens. Um, and that's to say that it's random. 
Um, so it looks like libertarianism is the view that there are random events sprinkled into our decision-making processes, and this somehow increases the non-randomness of the decision. And it seems like that couldn't be right. Putting random events into a decision-making process can't make it the case that I did it. Um, so I want to respond to this argument. Um, and when, when past libertarians have tried to respond to this argument, the strategy has usually been to argue that um, it's possible for a decision to be simultaneously undetermined and non-random in this way. Um, but I think that libertarians can argue for a much stronger thesis. I think that it's, I think we can argue for the thesis that there's a certain subset of our decisions. I'm going to call them torn decisions, and I'll tell you what they are in a minute. Such that if they're undetermined in the right way, then they're also authored and controlled by us and non-random and L-free. So the claim isn't just that they could be appropriately non-random. The claim is going to be that if they're undetermined in the right way, then they are authored and controlled by us and L-free. And given that, the question, the question of whether these decisions are libertarian-free is going to reduce to the empirical question of whether they're undetermined in the right way. Um, and so that means that the, um, the, the so-called philosophical question of whether libertarianism is true is going to come down to an empirical question. OK. Um, so let me just note quickly that the kind of libertarianism I've got in mind is a perfectly naturalistic, materialistic view. So I'm not going to be assuming any kind of mind-brain dualism, which some kinds of libertarians do. So the view is perfectly consistent with a mind-brain materialism. I'm going to be assuming that that's right. And the view is also perfectly consistent. I'm not going to be using any kind of agent causation. The, all causation is going to be ordinary event causation. So some libertarians have this idea that there's a second kind of causation where a person can come in and start a causal chain. And that doesn't reduce to just events causing other events. So the view I've got in mind is going to be all event causation and completely materialistic. All right. Um, so in order to, so the, my central claim here is going to be that if these things are undetermined in the right way, then they're um, non-random in the right way. And so first, what I need to do is tell you, before I argue for this, what a torn decision is. Those are the decisions in question. And what the relevant kind of indeterminacy is. So a torn decision is just a decision where you've got multiple options, and you're torn as to which option is best. And you decide without resolving the conflict. So you decide while still feeling torn. Um, so I think we make these kinds of decisions quite often, several times a day, right? So you might get up in the morning and go, oh, should I have eggs or cereal for breakfast? Mm, I'll have eggs. And then later you might go, should I ride my bike to the office or, or drive? Um, I'll ride my bike, right? So most of these decisions are sort of little decisions that don't really matter, but they can also happen with big, important decisions, right? So you might have a job offer that you really want in a city that you really hate. And you might be completely torn as to whether to take it. And you might have a deadline that forces you to decide before you sort of figure out what's the best thing to do. And you might decide while feeling completely torn. Um, OK, so that's what a torn decision is. And let me just point out three things about them so we've got clarity here. So the first thing is, a torn decision is, by definition, a conscious choosing event, right? So if you do something without really thinking about it, it doesn't count as a torn decision. And that's most of what we do, right? So if you're, you know, if you're driving along talking to your friend and you turn left at the right street, but you didn't really notice it, that's not a torn decision. Um, in order to be a torn decision, there's got to be a moment where you sort of pull up and go, wait, what should I do? Um, I'll do that. So. Um, so the picture I've got in mind is you sort of going through your day, like sort of just doing things without really thinking about it. And every once in a while, you come to a fork in the road. And you're like, oh, uh, I'll go this way, right? And then later it happens again. So don't ever overestimate how often these things happen. It's, you know, I think they happen a few times a day, but it's not as if they're constantly happening every time you do something. That's not the idea. OK. Second thing, why do I care about these decisions? Um, so I think that these are the, the decisions that are most important in connection with whether we have libertarian indeterministic freedom. And the reason is 
These are the decisions where, if you're a libertarian, you should want indeterminism. In cases where your reasons pick out a unique best option, it's okay if determinism is true, just let the reasons do it. Um, but it's in case of them, because that's the case where if something determines it, it looks like it's something external to your conscious reasons. So that is the case where the determinism might be freedom undermining. So these are the decisions where you should want indeterminism. Um, okay, and one more thing. Um, for those of you, I don't know how many of you are, but for those of you who are familiar with Bob Kane's work on free will, he talks about these decisions called SFAs. And they're sort of like torn decisions, but there's some important differences, and I just wanted to point out one. He defines these decisions as undetermined. So it's an open empirical question whether we make any, any SFAs, but that's not